Hey guys, we're going to look at uh, the difference of two squares theorem. If you remember, we have piddled around before with uh, equations like this. And these are basically the same two equations. The one on the left looks, that's a, you know, both of those are squares, right? X squared is a square of X. 9 is a square of 3. It's a difference because it's a subtraction problem, so we can factor that out. If you remember how, I'll show you in a second. The right, all we've done is just move that negative 9 over to the right, okay? It, those are the same equation, okay? So let's actually look at this. Um, we know how to factor this, right, if there are two squares. Oops, what in the world? Going backwards here. Um, that's going to be an x here, an x there. I got a plus 3 and I got a minus 3, okay? Don't forget, you set both of these equal to 0. Okay, we got a new a new issue here. Interesting. <laughs> Both of those equal to zero. So x plus three, x minus three equals zero. And then of course it'll be x plus three is equal to zero. And x minus three equals zero. So we got x equals negative three and positive three. Okay, which is the same thing over here. If you take on the right one, if you, you can look at it if you want to and do one thing to one side of an equation as you do the other. Well, if you, if you just want to solve for x on the right equation, well, you're going to have to go like this. What's the square root of x squared? That's what, how you're going to get x. Well, if you do that to the left side, you do it to the, this right side as well. So you get x here, but what is the square root of 9? Well, the answer is 3, and the answer also, if you introduce the square root like this, then you have to include the answer negative 3 because Negative 3 times negative 3 gives you positive 9. Knowing that is what helps us do these um, other types. Now, if you look at this one, um, this is kind of weird. This part right here. All right, let me go with that. Okay, here we go. Look at that. x squared equals 3. Well, there's no integer that gives you a 3 there. But if we follow the same exact kind of rule we did over here, It'll work. You just have to, you know, take the square root of both sides. In other words, if it works for that, then you, you just copy it. Just do the same thing if it works, right? Okay, so we're going to go the square root of both sides, boop, there, and then boop, there. That gives you an x. Since you introduced the square root, there isn't any real answer like an integer, so just leave it like this. That's all. But you have to, what you have to do is you have to put two answers. And the way to do that, rather than having to write two things out, oh, the square root of 3 and the negative square root of 3, just write it like this, positive or negative square root of 3. So that'll work, all right? And you can keep on working the same exact thing, and we're going to use these to solve other problems in the future. But let's look at this. Oops, I keep getting some funky things going on here. All right, let me try to get off here. All right. <laughs> okay, we'll pause it. All right, um, we're going to approach this exactly the same way as we did just a minute ago. We had x squared equals, I don't know, 3 or whatever it was. So we're going to go, okay, we take the square root of this side, we take the square root of that side, since that's an equation. This will give us x, this will give us not only just the square root of 3, but both the positive and the negative. Since if we, if we go like this, and we square it, we'll get a negative times a negative, which is a positive. The square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is the square root of 9, which is 3. And that will give us also a 3. So if that works for this one, and it works for that one. So you will take this entire thing, anytime you see something like this, and you will take the square root of it. And then, of course, you will take the square root of the other side as well, because it's an equation. You do the same thing to both sides, right? You tell me what's left on the left side of the, of the equation. And, of course, it's x plus 17, right? What's left on the right side of the equation? Just the square root of 2. You can't do much with that. You can't change it to anything. But you do put this because you're going to need this positive and a negative uh, values of both of that. Okay? Now, we're not solved for x, right? Look at, that, look at that equation. What's one last thing we have to do to make sure it gets solved? Yeah, okay. We have to subtract the 17. So x equals negative 17 plus or minus the square root of 2. That's a disgustingly horrible looking answer. But there you go. That's the answer. All right? 
Let's try another one just like it. Oh, look at that. You, they just couldn't leave you with the integers, could they? That's no big deal, really. Do exactly the same thing. Copy it down. And you can you can get to a point where you just go, bleh, heck with this. I'm just going to, I know what to do my next step. Mentally take the square to both sides. So on the left side, you get x plus 2 fifths. All right, that equals. <clears throat> you probably know at this point it's plus or minus the square root of 3. Same thing, right? Okay, well then you just move it over one time. x equals negative 2 fifths plus or minus the square root of 3. And there you go. That's the whole answer. That's all you need to do. Okay. All right, let's try these three practice problems and see what you get. <coughs> Excuse me, you can pause it and I'll do A. Okay, here's A. You just go U, and then root, square root, X equals plus or minus the square root of 14. Don't even worry about breaking it down. That's just there, nothing there. Okay, pause it and do B. And again, you can write this part down, or you don't have to write it down. If you don't want to, you can get to a point where this is one of those quick, quick problems you do in your problem set. This is going to be x plus 9, because you know you're taking the square root. This will be plus or minus the square root of 11, whatever the heck that is. It's not an integer, I know that. Okay, so then we have x equals negative 9 plus or minus the square root of 11, and there we go. That is your answer. Okay, pause it and do C. All right, let's do this mentally. We can go x plus 1 seventh. In other words, we're taking the square root of both sides. Equals the square root of 8. Now, let's take this over here. The square root of 8 is the same thing as this, right? The square root of 4 plus 2. I mean, excuse me, times 2. This part gets taken out and turns into a 2. That's gone. So your answer becomes this. 2 times the square root of 2. And we're going to have, again, we're going to have, since we introduced the square root, we're going to say plus or minus 2 square root of 2. The last step you need to do is take the 1 7th and move it over until it turns into negative 1 7th. And that is your answer. A crazy answer. Okay. All righty. And that is how you mess with uh, square roots this way, the difference of two squares.